Today, we're going for our first run in the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. Six point one zero miles, seven minutes, fifty seconds per mile, one hundred and fifty-two beats per minute. Getting out there for a fart leg run in some relatively wet conditions, taking the Brooks Hyperion Elite Two out for a first run and having a fantastic time. Now, before I get to my thoughts on this shoe after just the first run, do I go, go over some disclosures? This is a pair of shoes I purchased with my own money. No one sent it to me. No one's reimbursing me for any purchase price. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts or footage before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now, with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about this Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. Now, I had a lot to say about the Brooks Hyperion Elite 1, which was, believe it or not, released just six months ago, pretty much like almost to the day. And that shoe not only had problems with the shoe itself, it also had problems with the way that it was released. I really think that Brooks treated its customers very poorly on that one. Brooks sent out a big blast email saying like, look, we're gonna have a midnight drop of this shoe at midnight on February 29th, the day of the Olympic trials, you can have a chance to order this shoe online. 12 hours from the time that Brooks sold me this full price $250 shoe, they were then announcing that version two of that shoe was gonna be on sale in just a couple of weeks. But I wanted, the one thing I wanted to do in reviewing this shoe was to make sure I put as much of that aside as possible and try to give this shoe a fresh look with fresh eyes. And there was a lot to be excited about from this shoe. It has, first of all, a very different midsole compound. The last one had DNA, was it DNA zero? I don't remember exactly what it was. This Brooks Hyperion Elite 2 has a bunch of DNA flash midsole foam and I've been loving the DNA flash material. It's a nitrogen infused midsole material that I've been loving in any shoe that Brooks has put it in, the Catamount and the Hyperion Tempo, all fantastic shoes. And in the Hyperion Elite 2, you've got 27 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, an eight millimeter drop, and it weighs in at just 7.5 ounces, making it not the lightest shoe out there, but pretty light for the amount of material you're getting under but the thing to keep in mind though is uh, it is a street legal shoe for marathon road racing, but it is not legal for any distances on the track in case that matters to you. It doesn't really matter that much to me, but it is a bunch of midsole foam and the midsole foam is made out of that DNA flash material that I was talking to you guys about. And it is just as good here as I was hoping it would be. Now, the way that I describe DNA flash midsole foam, it's, it's a lot like if you run in Skechers Performance Hyperburst material, it's kind of like that, but a little bit firmer. And what that means is at slower paces, like today was a fart, like two and a half minutes on, one minute off for a rest. On those off periods or my warm up, my cool down, the shoe's not that comfortable. It's actually a little bit firm. And that had me concerned for a moment at the beginning because the Hyperion Elite One was super, super firm. But once you start moving and getting up to speed, that's when I feel like you're putting enough like into the foam, you're hitting the ground harder, you're pushing off harder, and that's putting more kind of like force into the midsole foam. And that's when it really starts giving it back to you in a very pleasant way. I've been liking the Hyperion Tempo for the way that it performs at speed. And I love this Hyperion Elite 2 for the way it performs 
at speed. Uh, the upper up top, you had a very racer feel in the forefoot and uh, it felt very, very tight. Not like super uncomfortably tight, but it definitely feels like a racing shoe in the forefoot, uh, which was kind of like optically felt very weird because I felt like it was tight here, but the shoe seems really wide. There's a really wide base and platform for this shoe. Uh, so even though it was wet out there and there isn't a lot of rubber on the outsole of the shoe, I still felt very planted and I felt pretty secure in there. I didn't really feel like I was concerned that uh, I was gonna be slipping around or lose traction at all. So even though it is tall, it didn't feel like a super tall shoe. Instead, what I felt was, I felt like I could really push off uh, and get up to, I was trying to run at about threshold pace for today, or at least threshold power, critical power. And I felt like I could get there pretty easily and just kind of lock in. If not, it had me running a little bit harder than I was intending. So I guess that's kind of a good thing because for the same amount of like what I felt like I was running, I was getting uh, actually a little bit more output, uh, at least as far as the foot pod was receiving it. So I felt really good running in this shoe. Uh, the paces felt comfortable in it. Uh, and running in the shoe felt fantastic. It was like if I had a marathon racing version of the Hyperion Tempo and you put a carbon fiber plate in it, which this Hyperion Elite 2 has, what would it feel like? It feels like the Hyperion Elite 2. So I feel like there's a very good connection between the Hyperion Tempo that I love and now it's kind of racing older sibling. So uh, really excited about that. The upper uh, borrows a lot from the first version upper in terms of it feels very similar. I don't know that there's even really that all that many changes. If anything, I think they went even more minimal or I think they, they put less into kind of like the parts that are touching your foot and the heel collar back here. A little bit more sculpted, I feel like. Everything back here is super floppy, which uh, for a racer, I really appreciate. They're not wasting any weight or material on stuff that's just gonna kind of get in my way and soak up sweat and be a sweat sponge. So I really liking that. I love everything that's going on the upper, except for these laces. These are the same laces in the Hyperion Elite One and they're like weirdly stretchy and there's not enough of them and so I feel like I'm tying like the littlest tiniest knot when I'm trying to get these shoes on and even if I'm trying to get them all like cinched tight as soon as I like pull it just recoils back so I can't get like a good lockdown where it feels like I'm not getting a good lockdown uh, on the midfoot here. It felt actually pretty loose along the last two eyelets and I really wanted to get a little bit better of a fit. Ultimately, it was kind of a thing that bothered me at slower paces. Once I was running, I didn't really notice it at all, except in the left foot, I feel like I was even less secure there. So I did notice it a little bit, so it was a little bit of a distraction. I don't think it really took away from any kind of performance or I don't think it slowed me down at all. Uh, but it was, again, something that I was noticing and I just felt very loose kind of like in the collar part uh, of the shoe. But other than that, it wasn't a problem. I didn't feel like I was slipping out. I didn't feel like the shoe was gonna come off. Uh, I didn't have too many turns. I pretty much just on country roads here, uh, everything's pretty much straight. And then there's like a right angle and then there's a lot more straight. And then I turned around and came back. Uh, on the turnaround, I was fine. On the turns, I was fine. And uh, I think part of that is because what this thing is just such a wide body shoe in terms of like the width of the footprint. Uh, you get a lot of compression in the foam in kind of like this vertical direction. So like when you're pushing down on it, I feel like the foam does compress quite a bit in a very nice way when you're moving, like kind of pushing hard enough. But one of the things that it doesn't have though is a lot of torsional uh, flex. And so I don't know if it's the carbon plate that's in here that's doing it, or if they're, if they're doing something with the way that the nitrogen is extruded into the foam and the way the foam is made. But I feel like it's a very stable platform that you're running on. So very different from a lot of the other racers that uh, I've been in lately, which have a very kind of narrow and snug feel all around. It's narrow and snug in the toe box, and then really wide and stable kind of on the part that's like touching the the road and so it's a a weird combo because it feels loose and tight at the same time but overall those are just very minor fit issues things that i hope i can get dialed in a little bit better with a couple more runs in the shoe and ultimately if it doesn't get more dialed in i'm hoping it's just something that it's maybe you notice it but not really gonna end up affecting things the one thing that I did notice though is that this tongue isn't gusseted. It's really floppy and uh, it just goes all over the place. It was to the point where even after just six miles today on my left foot, uh, I could tell that the tongue had like moved over a little bit. Uh, nothing that was bothering me today, but if that's something that continued over the course of 26 miles, 
I'm not sure where that's gonna end up. Further testing, I mean, maybe it just stays there and that's as far as it goes, or maybe it just goes completely haywire and like, I'm just looking at my socks by the end of the run. I'm not sure, we'll see, we'll take it on a longer run uh, and see how it does. But so far, I think that the inclusion of DNA Flash in exchange for whatever foam they were using last time makes this shoe that uh, I think pros are liking to run in, but also that non-elites like myself uh, are liking to run in too. I really enjoyed it for the fart like out there today. I did eight sets of the two and a half on and one off. And after the eighth set, I was like, oh, I thought I had more sets to do. I kind of wanted to just keep running it. So it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to a longer, instead of a threshold run, the next test will probably be like a longer marathon pace effort just to see how that feels. And I'm really looking forward to it. So those are my thoughts on the Hyperion Elite 2 after just the first run. If you have any questions about this shoe, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to keep the conversation going out and I'm trying to answer as many of them as I can. Uh, Cause I think there's just a lot to talk about this shoe and I'll be figuring out more uh, about it as I keep running in it. So keep those questions coming. Uh, that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?